Today we will be talking to uh, Frederick uh, Morgenson from Michigan State University. Frederick is a leading researcher in the areas of job design, job analysis and in particular leadership. Uh, Fred uh, received his PhD from Purdue University and uh, is full professor of management in the business school, Elibrod School of Business at Michigan State University and also an adjunct professor at the psychology department at MSU. Uh, Frederick Morgison published leading books on work design and work analysis. He is current editor of a leading journal, Personal Psychology, and he published many papers in these journals himself, among other things, Academy of Management Journal and Review, Journal of Applied Psychology, etc. pp. Today we are interested to, to talk to Fred about his personal experience of the leaders he encountered or the leadership style he executed himself. So, Fred, thank you very much for taking the time and for your support of our, our center. You know that, that we are establishing this center to do cutting edge research cross-disciplinary, so economists, psychologists, and maybe sociologists in the future. You have been doing research on the topic of leadership a lot, but today we are interested in your personal experience. So, first question, from, from what you have experienced, do we need leadership at all? Is it important? Um, academics, for example, perfect example, that people can self-motivate and do not need a stick or carrot? So I think at some point, Ralph, I would have said, um, no, no leadership is not necessary. But I think two things sort of changed my mind about this. One is that the research evidence is really clear. That leadership is related to a whole bunch of different kinds of well-being and performance sorts of outcomes. But I guess for me, it was my personal experience that really brought this home to me. And, and one is, is how leaders can create a climate. And that climate can either be really positive or really negative for your own kind of work life. Even if it doesn't affect you directly, it, it can make it a, a good place to work or, or not a good place to work. And we studied some of this in uh, the US military and we found how leaders can create positive safety climates. Mm -hmm. And that in fact, uh, it relates to the extent to which they have accidents um, uh, on the workplace. The other, uh, other you piece- You mean like, like in combat? Did, did you study soldiers that went to Afghanistan or elsewhere? We studied a, a transportation unit and it was basically the people that moved all the heavy equipment around the world when the U.S. military deployed. Mm -hmm. And so they would, if you need a tank in Iraq, they were the people that put, give you your tank in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found is that when you had a positive relationship with your leader and they created a positive safety climate, you had the, the, the mm -hmm. sort of greatest amount of citizenship behavior around safety related uh, activities. But I think the other piece that, that I've, I've experienced more um, as a professor in a business school is the extent to which a leader can move an organization forward or not. And sort of a, a most of my experience has been most leaders are sort of status quo. And so you just sort of move sideways. Mm -hmm. You never go up, you never go down. It's, it's, it's very much a lack of innovation. And I think uh, good leaders uh, have a vision and good leaders move organizations forward. And so that's sort of another component that I think is really important. Well, that almost answers my next question, how you would characterize effective leadership. Would, would, would you say that probably the, what you just mentioned, moving the organization forward, would you say that the, 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 the most important distinction between a leader and a manager? Well, certainly the sort of the vision uh, part of, of, of leadership is a, is a distinguishing feature. But, from my standpoint, I don't make a big distinction between leader, leader and man, uh, leadership and management. Uh, for me, an effective leader does a, a number of things, and, and I really focus more on sort of the behavioral component as opposed to the sort of the attributes of the leader. Although I think there is one key attribute that I'll, I'll mention at the end. I think the first thing is that they're really sensitive to their followers' needs. So, uh, to the extent that a leader understands what their followers need from them, and then provides that, and and the trick as a leader is that every one of your followers is different. And so trying to understand what those unique needs are of those people is, I think, a key leadership role. Um, for people that are professionals, knowledge workers, uh, they're often quite autonomous and able to, to work on their own. And so for me, the leadership role uh, is a little different. Um, one is sort of a re resource acquirer. So to what extent can I, as a leader, get resources that help my followers be successful Another key role is to, is to manage the boundary between the leader and the broader organization. And whether that's preventing things from affecting your followers 
or coordination uh, across units or across people, um, that, that becomes uh, pretty important. Another thing that I think is super important is this idea of the, they're the opportunity providers. And so they're out there scanning the environment, looking for opportunities for their followers. And the best leaders really figure out ways that are consistent with what the follower is trying to accomplish um, in their professional life uh, and, and giving them those opportunities. And probably the, the, the characteristic that I would single out is sort of a cluster of things, but it's trustworthiness, integrity, um, that you uh, do what you say, and, and that's real important because sort of that trust is the foundation for kind of high-quality relationships. Okay. Do you think people can learn that? Are leaders born or made? Yeah, well, of course, the, 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 the uh, easy answer is, um, is yes. They're, they're born and they're made. Uh, the research on this, I think, is, is sort of suggested that about 30% of leadership is sort of a genetic component or sort of a, a born component. Uh, so that means 70% is, is, is uh, made or developable. And I think if you think about what leadership is, it's influence, it's engaging in certain kinds of behaviors, those are things that you can learn. I think most people learn leadership by looking at models. So past leaders, current leaders, and, and sort of emulating that, that behavior that they see. If you think about the domain of leadership, there's a knowledge base um, of, of what to do mm -hmm. and, and how to do it, so kind of a declarative and procedural knowledge component. And that's all learnable, right? We go to school to learn all sorts of different kinds of knowledge. Leadership would be no different. Uh, leadership has a set of skills associated with it, influence, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, those skills can be learned. They're not something you have when you're, when you're young. You get experiences and, and you test yourself and you get feedback and you get better at it. So uh, I think a lot of the key uh, things that we look at in terms of leadership are in fact things that you can go out and get experiences and that helps uh, enhance. Well, if it's so easy basically to become a good leader, why does it so often not work? Why do we see so many managers in organizations or, or politicians or other people in influential positions that obviously are no good? Employees got ill and, and, and burn out, etc. Uh, why is that? When, when it's easily learned, why can't we just teach the right people to do the right things yeah. and the world would be a better place? Yeah, I would say it's learnable, but I wouldn't say it's easy to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, these are challenging things to learn. I think oftentimes you're sort of fighting against your own inherent tendencies um, that you've learned from being a child. And so um, it's learnable, but it takes great effort mm -hmm. uh, to learn them. And so why do we have so many bad leaders is I think people um, haven't learned the lessons uh, of their own experience and the experience of others. And so when I think about sort of how one develops these things is you have to go out and get experiences that are sort of targeted to your developmental needs. But then you have to reflect on those experiences. You have to somehow try to extract the lessons from those experiences. And what we know about most managers is they, they have lots of experiences, but they don't ever take the time to reflect upon those experiences. And that's the sort of the big problem. My first leaders were the most influential in a way, and this is mom and dad. Um, I think they showed me some, some, some key sort of traits that uh, are kind of leadership in, in character, but also um, just more general kinds of things that you can leverage as a leader. Um, so, you know, they demonstrated kind of strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up, we, we um, had a small business, and when you're in a small business, if you don't work, you don't make any money. Yeah. And so I got used to working seven days a week. Uh, I put myself through college mm -hmm. and then worked there full time after graduation, and uh, I routinely worked seven days a week um, for all year. You know, whenever a client wanted to record at the studio, um, I would be there. And most musicians like to record at night, and so mm -hmm. I would be there at all hours of the day. I think another thing that, that becomes really important from a, from a leadership standpoint is this idea of self-confidence or self-efficacy. Because a lot of times you, you will have to be confident in yourself and then you have to convince other people to be confident as well. And, and that's a real challenge. And so 
uh, for whatever reason, they were able to impart to me this idea that I was just extremely confident, even kind of maybe in the absence of direct evidence that I should be so confident. <laughs> In your own leadership positions, I mean, you're supervising PhD students, you're leading the team of editors at, at PSYCH, uh, you have done consultancy projects, and I guess some of them with a group of people. What would you consider most important? What, what have you done that, that you are proud of and where you would say, there I show leadership or do show leadership, and that's important? Yeah, I think, I think the things, the things that I'm most happy about are, are when I'm able to sort of figure out what motivates individual people and what their aspirations are, and then sort of act in a way and, and, and help them achieve whatever it is that they're seeking to achieve, so whatever their you know, individual goals are. I think the other thing that, that gratifies me is, is this idea of having sort of a sense of where we want to go, having an idea. Of, of what to pursue the vision of things and then to, to go implement it and, and pursue it. I think we often venerate leaders who have who espouse visions, but I think there's also a certain value in not only having the vision but then seeing it through, right? And so both pieces turn out to be important. And so I think, for example, with the journal, um, I have sort of a distinctive idea about how to, how to promote the journal and, and how to try to move it forward and, and kind of leverage the strengths that exist. And, um, and so kind of coming up with that and then beginning to sort of promote that and uh, articulate that is, uh, is exciting. It's a toolbox. And so as a leader, you should have a lot of tools in the toolbox. And sometimes you need a hammer, sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a wrench. And as a, as a leadership researcher, you are a little bit more an educated user of the tools compared to people who haven't that background. You know? I think so. You mentioned work ethic or integrity, honesty. It's easy said that sure these values are important, but if you look at the, the life outside of the laboratory, we see that so many violations happen and, and people become rich by violating all sure. these basic values. How do you think about yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, clearly values are important, so I, I, first I'll talk about, you know, kind of the importance of values in, in, in the general sense and then about specific mm -hmm. kinds of values. You know, one of the things I suggest to leaders is they should have a really clear understanding of what their personal values are, because that is the source of your leadership. And, and you acquire these values over time, you often acquire these values from your family, and uh, it's really important to have a sense of, of what those values, in fact, are. Um, but values are, are value-free in a way. I mean, you can have values that are good and values that are bad. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I believe that there's a certain set of things like integrity, like uh, being ethical, that are, that are critical. And, and they're critical for a lot of reasons. One is, is you know, it's sort of a, a societal good to, to act in ways that are, are ethical and, and positive. I think to the extent that organizations don't act in that way, you lose trust of, mm -hmm society at large. And of course, society gives you as, as an organization your right to operate, and they can take it away. They can either take it away through laws or regulations. Um, and so you have sort of a responsibility as a business to, to do that. But I think the more important reason why being ethical and, and honest is important is that it's the other option is not sustainable over time. I mean, you may have short-term gains, you may uh, succeed as an organization in the short term or as a leader in the short term, but over the long term you won't succeed and eventually that gets found out and so if we think back to just a couple few years ago uh, and all the kind of financial crisis in, in the housing markets and the and financial markets, um, that's sort of a direct cause of what I would consider sort of unethical short term thinking and, uh, and it's just not sustainable and so that's I think from a, from a, a societal standpoint, that's why you need to really try to sort of instill kind of positive values, do the right thing uh, in organizations. Do you think we have learned our lesson from, from the last crisis, or well, some people have? Or I think we've not learned it well enough, is my yeah. guess, um, and, and this, is, this is a frustration, because I think, I think the, mm. the economic incentives are so great, and the economic rewards are so great that it's, um, it, it's difficult to overcome that. Okay, thank you very much, Fred. Thank you. Thank you.